Uh, Lafora disease is probably one of the most, uh, if not the most severe of the epilepsies. Fellow Homo sapiens, now I don't know about you, but I hadn't heard of the Lafora disease until very recently. It's an ultra rare genetic epilepsy which hangs around in a child's genetic makeup until they turn 12, 13, 14 ish, when it rears its head and, uh, well, rips everything apart. In today's episode, we hear from lead clinician researcher Jose Serratosa from the University Hospital Fundacion Hernandez Diaz in Madrid, Spain, who shares with us his insight into Lafora disease and explains why we need pharma to fund research into it. Now, please do only continue to listen or watch this episode if you are feeling strong enough to hear of a heartbreaking situation which we are sharing not to upset you, but to spread awareness and encourage organizations to fund research into this shocking, devastating epilepsy. I am uh, Jose Serratosa. I am an epileptologist working in Madrid, Spain, and I am leading the epilepsy unit in a university hospital called the Fundación Jiménez Díaz in the city of Madrid. I can't say that, but it sounds wonderful with your accent, so <laughs> it's lovely. Um, tell us about your work in um, epileptology and what led to your work specifically on, on in the rare epilepsies and then even further down in Lafora disease. Yes, when I was a neurology resident, I saw many neurological diseases and I saw one group of diseases that I thought could have a possibility of a nice or future good uh, treatment. And that was the epilepsy. So we could do surgery, we could do drugs, we could do uh, certain types of uh, stimulation. And the patients would, uh, in a high proportion, respond well to treatment. So I went to specialize in epilepsy to UCLA with uh, Dr. Delgado Escueta in Los Angeles. And when I was there in the 90s, I saw, we saw together a patient with uh, Lafora disease. And I thought, well, this is such a terrific disease that we have to do something. So we started working then in, in Lafora disease. What exactly is Lafora disease? Uh, Lafora disease is probably one of the most, uh, if not the most severe, of the epilepsies. It uh, has uh, the first symptoms at the age of 12, 13, 14. So these are completely normal kids, almost uh, becoming adults, that suddenly have a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. That's the usual first symptom. And then start having uh, cognitive uh, deterioration, problems at school, and sometimes a uh, kind of uh, tremor-like myoclonus. So the bad thing is that this uh, clinical picture is progressive, so everything gets worse and worse. So it's uh, probably, as I said, one of the most severe epilepsies. And also I think that the fact that it begins in normal children who, you know, are living a normal life, becoming adults with their families, etc., friends, makes it more uh, harder. And I understand that it's genetic, right? And that the gene comes from both the, both parents. Autosomal recessive disease. So both parents, the father and the mother, have to have a, a copy of the abnormal gene, the mutated gene, and the affected son or daughter has to have one copy from the mother and one copy from the father of the mutated gene. And so because it's also genetic in the sort of traditional sense, that means um, that more than one child can actually have this rare disease. Yes, the chance for each new uh, child in the family of having the disease is 25%. But there are families where, you know, one out of four has the disease, but there are also families where three out of three have the disease. And then knowing what's going to happen to the child 
the second or the third child must be horrific. Do you think it's fair to say that this disease is something experienced by then the entire family, not just the per Well, I mean, we say that about epilepsies in general often. It's the family that goes through an epilepsy, but specifically with this, um, such horrific, um, and as you call it, the worst of the epilepsies, it must be just awful for the family. Yeah, you can imagine well, uh, families having children, you know, going through the probably the hard part of having children when they're babies and uh, still really, you know, children. And when they're 12, 13, 14, that, you know, you can really start to have a, an adult relationship with them. They start having these problems, these symptoms. And for the family, it's really, really tough. As I understand, this disease is very rare. How, how many? How many does it affect in the world? Well, we are taking care and started the world registry on La Fora disease. We have patients from Ukraine, Russia, <laughs> Mongolia, the US, wow, cool. the UK, uh, Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, and we only have a hundred patients in the registry. So. You can calculate that it's approximately from one to five per 10 million. That's the prevalence. Wow. Let's say in Spain, we are almost 50 million. There are only 10, 12 patients. So it's really rare, but it's, it's very uh, aggressive. For our listeners, clinicians, researchers, and families, is there anything that we can do, say this month in Awareness Month, to help support the families affected? Well, I think there has to be a, a movement to uh, support clinical research in ultra rare diseases, starting with the most aggressive ones. So uh, the usual approach is that I have a drug or a therapy I want to develop it and the first thing I look at is how much will it cost and the second thing is how much will I get in return. So I think we have to move out, move away from this uh, uh, way of thinking and uh, I'm talking for big pharma companies, start helping uh, to fund these uh, small, there's actually very small clinical trials. They're not so expensive. Of course, the cost is millions of, uh, of euros or dollars, but I think uh, we have an obligation to start running some trials and doing some clinical development of treatments that will probably not make anybody rich, Maybe there will be a small lose. I don't think it will be a, a big lose. Maybe there, there will be a, a small gain. But uh, it's not only looking at, you know, I invest 1 million, I want to have 1.5 million in 10 years. And we're not talking about uh, hundreds of millions like many popular drugs that we have now. But we're talking about valuing the lives of other humans basically <laughs> exactly and you know if i think for many companies losing or making only a few million dollars is not a big deal that's the most uh, uh you know important barrier we have now because there are several forms of treatment uh, drugs uh, gene therapy um, antisense oligonucleotides, some uh, enzymes that you can administer that can be used very soon to treat Lafora disease. But we always uh, confront this barrier of, this is a very rare disease. We only have, mm -hmm. I don't know, 100 patients in the world or 200, and we don't see how we're gonna get a return for 
for an investment in this. From my heart, a big thank you to Jose, who is devoting a huge part of his career and focus to fight for the lives of people affected by the ultra-rare genetic epilepsy, Nephora disease. Thank you also to pharma companies in advance for using your time and resources to find a treatment for this horrific fatal epilepsy. And to all of you who found your way to the end of this episode, I thank you for listening. Please do feel free to share what you've learned about Lephora disease with other people and do check out this charity, Chelsea's Hope, if you would like to learn more. <laughs>